Welcome to Hey! Let's Paint! I'm your host, Jer! Today we're gonna be copying a Monet painting. Well, I'm gonna be doing a painting in Monet's style. I've got my own source imagery and everything else, and I've done some research. The first research that I discovered about Monet was that he liked to paint on colored grounds. So he'd often have a colored, uh, you know, ground when he started painting. But it was not blue, it tended to actually be gray or light yellow. So the first thing we gotta do is make sure this blue is yellow. Boing! Nice. Even though I don't really work with yellow that much, this is gonna be interesting. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna have to deal with this. Um, oh hey Rousseau. Uh, Monet. Why are you in the studio? Um, I was just gonna make this painting. No, but life does not happen inside of a wall, inside of a box. You must go outside and paint. Paint where you should paint and see the world and see nature as it is. Not in this studio with this light. You have no light. You have not the light of the gods. Not the light that shines upon this earth. You have light made by man. And your quest must be to look at the light made by God. Oh, but it's going to be really kind of annoying. I got to get all my brushes together and all my paints and I don't even have... Be silent! Pack your things and we will be gone. So it's good to have a box or some sort of container if you're going outside to paint. You just take the box and fill it up with your paint and close it. Luckily, this one has a, a key on it. And then you're ready to paint outside. <sighs> oh, finally, I have found somewhere sufficient to paint where I can see the light change and feel how it affects my perception and my oneness with the nature around me. <sighs> this is beautiful. So once you get here, you're just going to want to take a photo and then go back to your studio and you can work from the photo. Huh? So I'm going to start off this painting with some very loose sketching with some very dry paint. So that means paint not with not a lot of medium in it at all. And I'm going to start painting like this because I actually found a couple of Monet's unfinished works online and you can kind of discern his process by looking at these unfinished pieces. So I can see that he often would sketch in the initial color that was like outlining a major mass and strangely I don't think uh, Monet a lot of people think of Monet as being like everything's mushed up everything's mushed up but I think he he really wanted that vibrancy of each color because these people really believed in this idea of optical mixing of color so that means when two colors are side by side they believed that the brain would optically mix them and that this mixture was actually more pure and um, beautiful for the eye to perceive. So let's get started. I'm just going to do some really fast, really fast sketches here. And I'm just kind of outlining where the sky is meeting this tree line here. I'm going to go down here because it doesn't really matter with blue too much. Okay.
Now, another thing we know about Monet's painting is that he often made his marks in similar directions. So sometimes when he was working on the sky, he would make all the marks in the sky in a similar direction. It was also common at this time to kind of work the entire canvas at once. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the value of this white We're building up texture, we're, we're building up all this nice optical mixing. Another trick that Monet often used was that he would find a color that's the exact same value as this, and then he would plop them down next to each other. Often this would be the complement. So, for instance, if we can mix, if we can mix a color that is this blue, the same darkness, like that, you can start hiding this same value within your painting. You just gotta make sure that color is the right darkness. So when you squint your eyes, that color should blend into your blues. Gonna see what happens if I bring a little bit of pink into that sky. This is where it gets tricky, just add a little bit of red. It's gotta be the same darkness, the same value, so. Now I got a little bit caught up in too much here. I should have been paying attention to everything. Use these colors throughout the entire painting.
First, I'm just gonna kill off this yellow in the sky here. But you can see how vibrant that sky has begun to be just by laying all these different colors on top of each other. <laughs> we get that vibrance and that optical mixing that the Impressionists so desired. Now all I'm going to do for here is I'm just going to come in with a little bit of green and again I'm being very trying to stay very loose trying to work my whole canvas at once And right now, I'm just going for these kind of basic broad colors just to get an idea on the canvas of kind of color relationships. And then we can go back and start defining shadows a little bit later. Now, due to atmospheric perspective, we're going to know that this area here is going to be a little bit lighter. It's going to be a lighter blue. but it's also fairly dark. So we gotta start with our darks in the foreground. And contrary to popular opinion, Monet did have some very striking darks. I'm just mixing green and, green and red to make this brown. And I'm going to start seeing these shadow shapes on these trees. It was often said, keeping my paint very, uh, not too, not too wet. of course famously talked about how his paintings really weren't often different than sketches so I don't want to get into any details too soon It's actually Rousseau who started plein air painting and of course Impressionism got there its name when this art critic actually was making fun of one of Monet's paintings called Impression of a Sunrise and he was essentially saying that these people are Impressionists as he was making fun of this uh, painting. <coughs> At the time, uh, Monet and his contemporaries were not accepted into the academic framework that dominated France. Landscape painting 
again. It kind of come come into prominence during these times, 17th and or uh, 18th century. And Monet would have come at the kind of the end of the end of the academic run. All right. Again, just trying to keep everything as loose as possible at this stage. And I'm going to start working that green in a similar way, in the same way that I approached the sky. First we attack big areas of space. Almost getting white at certain points here. Monet's paintings were not actually done this spontaneously either. Um, he often studied his subjects for quite some time before beginning painting of them. Often having these large areas of space kind of undefined. Wherever we see a color, we're just going to kind of start playing with getting its complement into the mix. So with this red, I'm just starting to kind of lay in some oranges that are similar value. Okay. Remember, these people like stuff to be really messy and ploppy. They really like to mix, have these colors mix right next to each other. So they were fighting against this idea of modeling, which is when you would tap, 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 you know, model these areas very slowly. So instead they were into these big brushworks. I'm trying to kind of, with my brushwork also designate flat areas and areas that are standing. So this, these areas I'm starting to work um, vertically, whereas these I'm still working horizontally. And Good. Mm 
When I was also scumbling a lot, which is kind of when you just drag one color across another. It's difficult to do when I've got such wet, wet canvas here. Now, at this point, I'm gonna, the one thing I'm really gonna pop back into is these original blues for my darks. That should help me form the space a little bit more. And also, we have a tendency to think of smaller stuff being farther in the distance. So, where I'm supposed to be in the distance, I'm going to make things a little bit smaller. Start giving the illusion of depth. There we go, that's what I needed was that real bright, just needed to go straight out of the tube blue in some areas here. we're gonna want some areas of the trees to kind of stick through Now I'm just kind of spitballing it a little bit.
And of course, uh, Monet would always have some sort of flowers or something to generally really pop in some of his most famous paintings at least. So I'm gonna go see what happens. Hold my breath and just see what happens if I make an orange here. Really bright orange and it's gonna dab as flowers. I feel like I still need some of that blue. This area is kind of strange as well, but. And there you have it. There's my interpretation <laughs> of a Monet painting. Um, thanks for watching. Again, it's always interesting playing around with these. I enjoy doing them. So if you like this sort of thing, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to comment, share, and I'll see you next time on. Hey, let's paint. Hey, hey, let's paint, paint, paint. Hey, let's paint. Let's paint, paint, paint. Hey, let's paint. Hey, let's paint, paint, paint. Hey, let's paint. Hey, let's paint, paint, paint. See you next time.